morning YouTubers. Today I'd like to talk about uh, Cinemaware and their first game which was Defender of the Crown on the Amiga in 1986. This was a two disc uh, game released by Bob Jacob and his wife who hailed from Los Angeles. They started a new company which became known as Cinemaware with the view of making movie quality games. Now they had thought about doing this before but the computing power was never really there. It took the release of the Commodore Amiga to change their minds and eventually to start Cinemaware. They then contracted um, a software company to make the first in a series of games for them. The company was Sculptured Software in very early 1986. They were contracted to write the code for Defender of the Crown, SDI and perhaps one or two other games, but I'm not sure about that. They initially signed a contract with um, Mindscape to release five or six games in the Cinemaware line, all due for release in 1986. Now, the game wasn't started until the beginning of 1986, so the pressure was really on to get the first release out of the door. And this is where Sculptured Software came in. They were contracted to get the code down uh, the sort of the um, graphics and animation was provided by Jim Sash, who was well known in the Commodore 64 scene at this time for doing um, the Saucer game. Uh, well, I forget the name of it now, but it was well known in the C64 area at that time. Anyway, things didn't go to plan, and Defender of the Crown started to fall behind a schedule. Bob Jacob went to Sculpture Software to see what they'd done. And basically they had done very little of Defender of the Crown. So he had to find someone who could quickly get Defender of the Crown ready, <clears throat> bring all the pieces together, code the game, and get it available for release. He ended up turning to none other than Mr. R.J. Michael, a well-known figure in the Amiga scene. Even in those days he was pretty cleared up on the Amiga. He was one of the original Amiga programming guys <clears throat> and had done, um, he'd done the code for uh, Graphic Craft on the Commodore Amiga as well as doing lots of code for the Amiga uh, for its release by Commodore. So all the software was given to RJ Michael and he was uh, asked if he could get the game ready in three months. To this he said, sure and off he went. Now as time went by, RJ Michael was put under tremendous pressure to get this game finished. The deadlines had already been agreed on with Mindscape. It had to be released in late 1986. <coughs> Excuse me, this was now the mid-1986 and the deadline was quickly approaching. As it turned out, RJ managed to get the game done, obviously, and it was released in 1986 and became one of the greatest Amiga titles, if not the greatest Amiga title, game title at any rate. The game was universally applauded for tremendous graphics, amazing sound. However, the gameplay was not as good as it could be. It was severely disjointed in some ways. The game could be, on, on one hand, incredibly easy, and on the other hand, incredibly hard. Some segments of the game, like Conquering Land, was fairly easy. Other areas, like the jousting, sword fighting, were quite difficult, especially on the Amiga version. Later versions released in 1987 were tuned to make the gameplay more, more uh, unified, so it became more easy, let's say. But the Amiga version was strange for a number of reasons. Some features were cut out of the game entirely for two reasons. The first reason was they simply ran out of time. It had to be released in late 1986 for contractual reasons um, and also they couldn't get the game on two discs. If they wanted the extra artwork, the extra scenes in the game, it wouldn't go on two discs and that wasn't acceptable at the time. So it was quite a rushed release but you can understand why. Later versions of the game polished it somewhat uh, although not in the graphic area. It was many years before a better looking version of Defender of the Crown appeared, which just showed how good the Amiga version was. It was miles ahead 
of everything else. And um, when it was, when I first saw it, it was in, I think, Commodore user. Probably in early 1986. I was using a C64 at the time, and the graphics of Defender of the Crown appeared to be cinematic, really. They looked like photographs. Now, looking back years later, obviously they weren't. But they were so far ahead of everything else that was available that they looked like photographs, even though they weren't. It's difficult to imagine now. You imagine going from a black and white computer to a colour computer. That was the difference in graphic quality. Uh, but things like that don't happen anymore. In the modern age, you have NVIDIA graphics, you have ATI. Each generation refines and speeds up, increases resolution. But there is no dramatic improvement anymore. It just, it just doesn't happen anymore. They are all a very gradual upgrades. In the computer scene, we went from the 8 bits to the 16 bits. The difference was enormous. Later on, you would go to the 32 bit Amigas, but that was more of a disappointment. But that's a story of another day. Back to Defender of the Crown. It was released in 1986 to rave reviews mostly. There were always people who questioned the gameplay. It was very simplistic. It was a very easy strategy game that a kid could play. Um, but on some sections of the game, especially the mini games, were very difficult, but that's just the way it was. As I say, later versions released in 1987, the DOS, uh, NES, uh, and various other versions, Spectrum eventually got one years later. C64 as well. The gameplay was tweaked, uh, difficulty was tweaked, not always to make it easier. So the C64 version, as I remember, was quite difficult. But anyway. But that is Defender of the Crown and a little bit of a story of Defender of the Crown. There is a lot more to it and I may do an in-depth um, video of it at some point, I'm not sure. But if you're an Amiga user and you haven't played Defender of the Crown, shame on you. You really should. It is a high quality game. It is a launch title, almost, of the Amiga. It's a launch title of Cinemaware at least. And it is a game that really put the Amiga on the map. Many, many of thousands of Amigas were sold uh, on the back of the Cinemaware release, and rightly so. It is a testament to how good uh, both Cinemaware were, RJ Michael was, Jim Sash, and a testament to how good the Amiga was. So that is Defender of the Crown. I'll include some uh, videos at the end of this, uh, some animations, music and so on, so you can see, see what the game was all about. As I said, it was later ported to the Amstrad CPC, the ST, uh, the two, Apple II GS, the 64. Um, I think the Mac got a version. Uh, DOS definitely got a version. That was in four colours. CGA and I think an EGA version. 16 colours. And it looked pretty awful. The sound was dreadful. It was horrible. The CDI got quite a nice version, which looked pretty much like the CD32 version. Um, and later ports, many years later, we had the Android and iOS, but they are just basic copies of the Amiga version. So that is Defender of the Crown. Uh, if you haven't played it, please do so. Be kind to it. Uh, looking back, it's a little bit clunky. But if you go back to 1986 and you play that game for the first time, it would blow your socks off. Thank you very much.